Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's good uh, to see you on uh, what is a beautiful fall evening here in New York. I was really enjoying uh, sitting in front of the window and feeling a cool breeze on my face. And uh, I hope uh, wherever you are, uh, you're sitting uh, with health and good weather. Uh, I've been uh, seeing quite a few students uh, this week. And uh, sometimes when uh, you do a lot of uh, dokusans, uh, sometimes things uh, pop out of your mouth uh, that you wonder about. They just, they just kind of surprise you. So uh, I had a student, uh, and I was really appreciating uh, his practice. Uh, it sounded like he was. Uh, really putting a lot of uh, very fine effort into it uh, and uh, had uh, to some extent successfully uh, let go of the idea that if I put a whole bunch of effort into my practice, uh, I'm gonna get, get something really good. Uh, uh, and he was finding that putting the wholehearted effort uh, was in itself really good. Uh, not in the sense that you always feel good, but there was something right about it. And uh, when uh, you practice in that way, the, the world that you uh, live in tends to reflect that uh, back to you. So I wanted to give him encouragement and what popped out of my mouth was, oh, your, your practice is on fire. Uh, and after our uh, interview uh, ended, uh, I said, oh, huh, that's interesting. Uh, well, what else could it be? <laughs> Good, bad, or indifferent? Because, uh, you know, like everyone else, uh, on my screen today, I poke around in the Buddhist literature, and I know that uh, fire is uh, often used for the empty nature of uh, reality, sometimes compared to a candle flame that has a shape and looks solid, but is nothing other than pure combustion, has no uh, particular characteristic at all and uh, vanishes uh, with a puff of wind. So uh, that got me to thinking uh, about uh, the way a fire pops up uh, in the Buddhist uh, literature. And one thing that I recalled was uh, you know, one of the very earliest uh, writings that comes from uh, early Buddhism is the uh, Buddha's Fire Sermon. Uh, it's got a great name, doesn't it? The Fire Sermon. And uh, uh, basically what the Buddha's, Buddha says is uh, the six consciousnesses are on fire. Your eye is on fire. Your ear is on fire, your nose is on fire, and your uh, thoughts, they're all this raging fire. And in that very early Buddhist sense, uh, uh, fire uh, was uh, uh, a metaphor for passion, intensity, and attachment to the world. Uh, which uh, uh, in early Buddhism was felt to be not a good thing. I was felt to be delusion. And uh, so the remedy for uh, the fire of existence was to detach yourself uh, from the world and the six senses. Uh, 
the sixth sense being uh, consciousness itself, the awareness of the thoughts that come and go in our heads. So uh, in this way of thinking, uh, the goal of spiritual practice was uh, asceticism, uh, to take away the fuel of all those passions that kept the fire going. And uh, when all that fuel was taken away, it might take many lifetimes to get all the fuel out. But uh, when complete uh, non-attachment uh, or detachment, I think is more accurate in, in this telling, is realize uh, you're burnt out, extinct. Uh, you don't come back anymore. Uh, and you enter into uh, nirvana. So uh, uh, practice was considered to be a journey away from the world. And of course, the Buddha tried that practice uh, for a number of years and was very good at, at it and nearly uh, killed himself with his asceticism uh, before he rejected it. Uh, nourished himself uh, from the brink of starvation and decided to sit. So that was the uh, early Buddhist uh, take on the image of fire. Uh, we get quite a different uh, take uh, when we enter uh, uh, the uh, Mahayana, which was a later development and driven a lot by lay people, I think it's important uh, to realize. And uh, of course, uh, one of the most famous uh, Mahayana texts uh, uh, is uh, the Lotus Sutra. And uh, some of you are uh, very familiar with the Lotus Sutra and if you are, you know that there's a fire in there uh, for sure. And so uh, human existence is uh, compared to a burning house. Uh, you know, we all know where this is heading and it's not heading anywhere that we necessarily want to go. Uh, but we're going there all the same. We're in this burning house. And this is the story about a father uh, and his three sons. And the father uh, smells smoke and looks around and there are flames everywhere. And of course his thought uh, is he's got to get his sons out of this burning house. Now notice the shift, uh, that's a very important one to how do I save myself uh, through detachment until I don't come back anymore? Uh, the Mahayana, the protagonist of this story, how, how can I save these children who don't realize the danger that they're in, who are out of touch with reality because all they want to do is play with their various toys, you know? Uh, and, uh, you know, of course, uh, we look around in our society and we see people playing with all sorts of toys. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, not that there's anything wrong with, uh, you know, fast cars and uh, all that stuff. And maybe we think there's something wrong with it. But in any event, uh, they're kind of uh, sidestepping the essential issue uh, that life ends, their house is on fire. So the father tries to get his uh, kids out and they don't want to listen to him. They completely ignore him because they're having such a good time playing with their toys. Uh, and so he uh, seizes upon uh, the time-honored method uh, of parents in this situation where the kids won't listen uh, or the more effective method anyway. And that method is to bribery. 
Uh, and so he says to his son, so look, uh, I, I see you're having fun with your toys there, but I got some much cooler toys outside in the yard. I've got three beautiful carriages for you to play with all covered with gold and jewels and so on. And if you'll come out of the house with me now, uh, I'll give each of you a carriage. And one of them is a goat carried a goat carriage pulled by goats. And one of them is a deer carriage pulled by guess what? And uh, the third carriage is the Buddha carriage. So uh, he brings his children go with him quite willingly and he saves them from the burning house. And this story is considered to be a, a great example of Upaya where uh, uh, the Buddha adopts his teaching to what his audience wants to hear, needs to hear. Uh, sort of gently leads them away from the burning house that they're fooling around in, uh, quite unaware. And uh, in the explanation uh, of the story, they say that uh, uh, the goat cart is kind of the uh, uh, practice that I was talking about earlier, the practice of uh, trying to take yourself out of the world uh, and basically to, to deaden yourself until nothing bothers you. Um, uh, and then there's uh, the deer cart uh, is the cart. Um, that's the arhat practice, technically speaking. And then there's uh, the deer cart, which is the pratyeka Buddha practice, which is uh, uh, the practice of the self-enlightened. In other words, the people who uh, live off on a mountaintop away from everyone else, uh, they don't get their hands dirty uh, mixing in the world. Uh, they devote themselves to uh, meditation and eventually uh, they come to a pretty good realization. End of story. <laughs> Congratulations, Pratyaka Buddha, you get a gold star. And then the final, uh, the Buddha carriage is, of course, the carriage of being one with the flames, not trying to avoid them, uh, realizing that the flames of samsara and the peace of nirvana are not two. And as the story goes, he gives each of his sons the Buddha carriage. How, how could he not? Because the goat carriage, the deer carriage, they're all encompassed by the Buddha carriage. The Buddha carriage leaves nothing, nothing out. The Buddha carriage includes that burning house. There's room for everything. And so our commitment is to burn brightly, not to dampen down the flame, but to use our energy to combust our life guided by the precepts, guided by our practice, to use it in a natural and ordinary way to burn with all sentient beings, to practice with all sentient beings, to open our heart with all sentient beings to allow everything in 
the pleasant than the unpleasant. And right there in the burning to find the peace of nirvana. Uh, sometimes uh, the imagery is one of a, uh, a lotus uh, burning in a fire. Uh, so uh, the fire uh, burns and the lotus appears. Uh, the brighter the fire burns, the more uh, sincere and wholehearted the practice, the more fully blooms the lotus. That's why practice realization, uh, well, as uh, to paraphrase Dogen, it's a matter for every day. You can do it from anywhere. You can do it from the lowest point in your life to the most ecstatic point of your life. All you need to do is to get into that Buddha carriage, leave nothing out, and put wholehearted effort into just what's here. Just what's here. Uh, the 14th century uh, Zen master uh, Basue had a little poem about the lotus. He says, what is my own Buddha mind? Upon enlightenment, the lotus will blossom in a roaring fire and endure throughout eternity. So this roaring fire, which is none other than ourselves, didn't begin with our birth. That's why we call it the unborn. Nor will it stop burning with our death, which is why we call it the unextinguished. So all this is, uh, you know, very nice to realize that just as we are from wherever we are in our lives, whether we're having a beautiful day with a cool breeze or uh, some other kind of day, just as we are, we're riding in the Buddha carriage. But unfortunately, believing that to be the truth isn't transformative. It will not save ourselves and all beings. And there's a kind of a funny story uh, that indicates that we must be truly intimate with the fire, uh, which is very different than going, yeah, it's a fire just as it is, great. Uh, and uh, so this uh, uh, story is about uh, probably a pretty high government minister uh, named uh, Minister Say. And uh, he was studying at Fayan's monastery. And uh, one day Fayan said to the minister, you know, you, you've been here uh, quite a while. You, you've never been to Dokusan. You haven't asked me a single question. And the minister said, oh, didn't you know? Uh, I studied with Ching Lin and had an opening experience with him. Fayang went, oh, well, uh, tell me about it. Uh, I'd like to hear. And so the minister said, well, one day I went into Dokusan and I asked Ching Lin, uh, what is Buddha? And Ching Lin said, uh, the god of fire comes looking for fire. And Fayan said, oh, well, that's a fine saying indeed, but I fear you might have under misunderstood Ching Lin. Uh, 
tell me more. And the minister said, well, uh, I am Buddha just as I am. And so when I ask, uh, what is Buddha? That's like the God of fire who rules over the whole kingdom of fire, seeking fire makes no sense. It's completely unnecessary. And Fayan said, ah, just as I thought, the minister misunderstood Ching Lin's words. So the minister got into a great huff and uh, he took his retinue and left the monastery uh, and uh, went on for some days uh, uphill and down downhill. But the further he got away from the monastery, the more he began to doubt and said to himself, hmm, Fayyan is the teacher of a thousand monks. He, he wouldn't mislead me. And so he and his whole retinue turned around and trudged miles and miles back to the monastery over hill and over dale. And uh, he went to see Fayyan in Dokusan, he says, I have a question, teacher. Truly humbled himself. And Fayan said, just that, you have only to ask me. And the minister said, what is Buddha? And Fayan said, the god of fire comes looking for fire. And at that, the minister had a deep insight. I tend to think that uh, something happened in the effort he made, trudging away and trudging back, opening himself. The difference, the difference between uh, knowing something and being intimate with something. He saw it right there, right where he was. His life combusting. His life as an offering to the three treasures. And so this is my wish for all of us to burn with a hard gem-like flame, as one writer had it, to bust our life with full sincerity and to offer up our combusting life, our full and wholehearted energy to the treasures of Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, ourselves, and all beings.